In this video, we're going to create a database and create two tables and populate them. We're going to add these values using both the GUI, the graphic user interface, and using SQL code. So let's do it. My name is Philip Burton from filecats.co.uk. So let's create a new database. So here I'm in SSMS. If you don't have it, then you can install it for free along with SQL Server. See my other videos on how to do that. So we create a new database. I'm going to call this cars and employees. So now we've got this new container. I'm going to create a new table. So I'm going to do the employees table first. So right and click on tables and go to new table. So we've got the column name. So I'll just put them in for now. So employee number, employee name, employee country, and car number. Why do I put employee at the beginning of each? Because for instance, if you had name, well, you might have lots of names. It might not just be an employee name. You might have a name of a project. And if everything's called name, then that might cause confusion later on. Now let's have a look at this second column data type. So what do we need? Well, first of all, here we need a number. So I'm going to change this to one of the many numbers. I'm going to change it to an int data type. Employee name. Well, we're currently okay. Nchar 10. So char meaning string, n meaning that it can have values outside of the standard alphabet in whatever region you're in. So for me, it'd be the West European alphabet and 10, the maximum number of characters. I'm going to change this to something else. I'm going to change it to a var char. So I don't need to go outside of the Western European characters, at least for my data set. Var meaning it's variable. I don't have to allocate 10 bytes to every single one. And I can make it a bit bigger because it's a var. If I only have a small value, then only a small number of bytes will be needed. So I'm going to do that as well for employee country and car number. Again, I'm going to put this as an int. Now we've got allow nulls. What are nulls? Nulls are values that aren't there. Like for instance here, we need to allow nulls for car number. So the question is, does everybody have to have an employee number? Yes. So I'm not going to allow nulls. But additionally, I want this employee number to represent the row. So it's going to be unique on every single row. So next one, for instance, is going to be number five. So what I'm going to do is call this a primary key. And so I'm going to come up here and I'm going to say primary key. And there's a little key symbol there. So you can also right and click on a particular column row and say set primary key as well. So you can see by default, and in fact, it has to happen. Any primary key does not allow nulls. Does every employee need a name? I'm going to say yes. Does every employee need a country? I'm going to say no. Maybe some employees don't want me to have at their country. Right. So there we go. So there's lots more things we can do down here, but I'm not going to have a look at any of them. I'm just going to now close this and it's going to say, do you want to save the changes? Yes. So I'm going to save this as employees. And it doesn't appear there. Why not? because this object explorer needs refreshing. So I'll go up to the top as I've got tables highlighted and it will refresh the tables and there is my employees. So what I'm going to do next is add in the cars table. Now I'm going to do this using code so you can see a different way of doing it. First of all, make sure you are in the right database. So make sure you're in the cars and employees database in this case. So I'm going to create a table and this table is called to be called cars and then an open bracket. So my first field is car number. Now I'll need a data type for it. So int I'm going to say, and I'm going to make it a primary key. So that by itself will be a complete table. It will just have the one column, but let's add some more. So next I'm going to put in color. So this is going to be a var char brackets 10, let's say. Now, it's usually good if I say whether it is nullable or not null. So I'm going to say not null here. And then date purchased. I'm going to call this a date. I don't need the time. And I'm going to say there are some cars I might not know the date purchased. So there's a lot more detail that I can put in, but this is a car table. So if I execute that, you can see commands completely successfully completed. 
and refresh. There we go. Right, so now we've created the tables, let's populate them, let's add in data. So first of all, I'm going to use the GUI. So, right and click on the table, edit top 200 rows. I don't have 200 rows, why would I want to edit them? Well, the last row is a put your new data in. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to copy this, click on here, right and click, paste. And that now copies all four rows. So that is a quick and easy way to do this. So now let's have a look at how we can insert data using code. Why would I want to use code? I mean, that was quick and easy. Well, it's not replicatable. I can't do it again by just clicking play. I would have to copy and paste and so forth. And when you get deeper into SQL, you will see that using insert statements and other DML language, data manipulation language, it's actually not as complicated as it seems. So I'm going to insert, and I can put the word into if I saw a wish, but I just generally say insert, and let's drag cars there, and then the word values, because it's not going to come from another table, it's going to be hard code values that I'm going to put in. Open bracket. So I want to put in car number four, it's blue, that needs to be in single quotation marks, and then date purchased, I'm going to put it in this reverse format, which is year, month, day. Now I call it Japanese format, but it's also used in other places like China, South Korea, for instance. So there we are. So this is a valid statement. You may wonder why there's a squiggly underline with my table. It's because the computer uses something called a cache, C-A-C-H-E, to see whether the objects exist, but it doesn't get updated when you insert a new table. So to do that, go to Control, Shift and R for refresh. And now you can see the squiggly underline disappears. So I can execute that now. And here, one row affected. So let's see what we've got currently. If I right and click and go to select, we can see we've got four rows in employee number and we've got one row in the cars. Let's add the other two in just one statement. So I'm going to say number five is red and here and then I'll put a comma and then number six yellow and this is the date. You can have up to 1000 different values for a single statement. So now you can see two rows affected which means we have three rows in total. Well I hope you enjoyed this video and you're getting to grips with how to create a table both in the GUI and in the select query writer that we got over here. Now it can be a lot to take in, which is why I've got courses on how to do all of this and a lot more. Please have a look at the description if you would like to have practice on how to create tables, insert values, create your select statements and a lot more. In the next video, what we're going to do is combine these two tables together. So we're going to find out which particular car Jane is driving. Thank you for joining me in this video. If you like it, then please click the like button and why not subscribe and click the bell next to it so you'll be notified of any new videos. Thank you for watching this and keep learning.